Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a wonderful start uh, to their weekend. Uh, hopefully everybody had a solid week of trading and hopefully everybody's just living their best life. Again, at the end of the day, uh, that's the most important thing. Again, if you are brand new to the channel, uh, only thing we ask if you are getting value, continue to get value and you are tuning in, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, all the good stuff that helps us grow and kind of spread the word for unbiased uh, technical analysis. So that's it. That's it. Let's get into the markets and let's talk about it. So we had this really phenomenal run uh, in the markets from January the 6th, right? Uh, there wasn't anything special about January the 6th. There wasn't anything more special, more special than January the 5th or January the 4th. But at January 6th, we basically, as the market itself, just got tone deaf, right? Just got really tone deaf and sellers just got tired. That's it. It was exactly the same thing that happened um, in in 2008, right? Going into 2009, actually, excuse me, 2009. Uh, that was a generational bottom. Uh, and I remember, you know, me talking to my buddies you know, during that time. And I used to say, well, when, when, when is this market ever going to stop going down? And just like that, it stopped going down. So the market never gives needs to give you a reason why sellers get tired. Eventually, all news, no matter how bad or how indifferent the news is, eventually traders, investors, and everybody else in between, uh, they get tired and they become toned up. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, and we started an incredible, incredible uh, six, six and a half week run. It was absolutely phenomenal. At one point, uh, NASDAQ was up 17%, uh, uh, you know, taking down, you know, making back 17% uh, of what it lost uh, out of the 33% what it lost in 2022. And a lot of tr people, a lot of traders, a lot of investors, uh, they did a couple of things, right? Well, they did three things. They either participate in the rally or the other two parties basically were sitting there and saying, well, how could the market go up and keep shorting, 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 shorting until they finally uh, got really wrecked, you know, six and a half weeks later. Uh, and the argument was, well, how can the market go up, right? It doesn't make sense. Look what's happened with inflation. Look what's happened in the economy. It doesn't make sense. And my argument was the market never needs to make sense, right? It doesn't have to make sense. And there's a many times that Wall Street and Main Street just separate. And they separate sometimes for six months to eight months to over a year. And again, this is why the market that was a generational bottom in 2009 just started rallying while we were still in the first inning of recovery, right? Recovery from the economic, uh, you know, meltdown that we had from 2007. So it's one of those scenarios that nothing needs to make sense. Just concentrate on the price action. But the argument was on the way up was, well, Dan, well, not just Dan, well, you know, bulls, right? Look at the data, look at inflation. It's, it's obviously not tamed. We're obviously going to be longer than this is possible. You know, it doesn't make a difference uh, what the Fed chairs are saying, what all 3,000 of the Fed governors are talking about, where well, this is for the long run. How could the economy uh, support what the stock market is doing? And, and you know, for, for six and a half weeks, well, we nobody cared, right? Nobody cared until we got tired, right? And the same way uh, the sellers got tired on January the 6th, you could tell the buyers got tired somewhere around February the 8th. And all day they tried to recover last week, you could tell they put in a lower high from the previous week and ultimately uh, lost the five and the 10 day moving average. And again, if you've been watching this video in a, for a long, long time, you know what happens when there's an inverted hammer, right? When there's an inverted hammer, usually you're going to follow, uh, you know, some days, maybe some days will turn into weeks, uh, but short term selling and you could see it, you know, it happened uh, right here, just going back to, you know, going back to, uh, you know, October, here's a short term inverted hammer that was selling for about a week. Uh, then there was another inverted hammer right here. There's more selling. So you kind of get the picture, right? You got an inverted hammer, so you got a selling. So we got the selling. And the, the difference between the selling uh, that was going on in spurts during uh, the really aggressive six-week uh, uptrend, the market finally got tired. The buyers got tired as well. And all the, you know, all the news that they were negating, uh, all the data, the economic readings, and the 3,000 speeches that uh, we hear from the Fed, uh, Fed people daily. Um, 
Well, the Bulls couldn't, you know, couldn't keep up, you know, keep, couldn't keep up. And there just wasn't enough bids to facilitate the news. And ultimately, like I said, uh, buyers got tired and we, you know, we're in the middle of a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good decline here. Again, if you look at the overall uptrend, if you watched, uh, you know, Wednesday's video, like I said, you know, we're just trying to get our data, data day after day after day to trade for the next day. But, you know, we talked about every single level. It's all started. Uh, it all started from the 297, right? From the 297 level on the NASDAQ. That was really a big, uh, big move down. And since we took down this 297 level, I, I think that was on Tuesday's video, uh, Tuesday's video going into Wednesday, we talked about this 297 level. Ever since we took down the 297 level, uh, the Qs have dialed down $7. That's a pretty big move. And again, which really shows you uh, it, how important it is to, to really appreciate and understand and embrace uh, technical analysis. Even if you're a fundamental trader or a fundamental investor, uh, if you don't understand how important these crucial levels are, then you're, you're going to be uh, you're going to have a really really tough time trying to figure out uh, the license plate of the truck that just ran you over. So it's very very important to understand levels, and we'll get to uh, kind of key levels going back into uh, for for this week. But you had notable you know you had notable clues as well. Not only did the bulls get tired this week, right? They started brushing off kind of good news, right? So NVIDIA had, you know, you, know, you, you can make a case. It's, it's not really a, uh, uh, you know, it's not really a testimonial to, to NVIDIA's earnings, but everybody saw NVIDIA. Uh, they came out with earnings, you know, they beat by eight cents. They used a lot of AI language, which is uh, sexy talk right now. And the stock went up, you know, 35 points in the day. And usually uh, when, a, you know, when a leader, you know, when a you know, leader like uh, NVIDIA comes out with earnings, and again, um, Usually, it would have a massive, massive follow through on the Nasdaq the next day. And you know, when we when we gapped up, everybody's saying, "Well, just like uh, Netflix, quote unquote, saved the market uh, you know, when the start of earnings season." Well, the video saved the market again. The only difference is, you know, the market didn't get saved. And after gapping up 200 points, 150, 200 points on the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq went red. Right? The Nasdaq went red again. And, and Friday came around. Uh, you had more data that came out. The PCE reading came out. The data came in hot. And blah 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 blah. And then we went down again. And if you look at the numbers uh, towards uh, the end of the week, um, you know, pretty, pretty aggressive numbers. You got uh, the S&P actually did the best out of all of them. We'll get to S&P of uh, kind of a little bit of forecast going into this week. Uh, the S&P was down to 2.7 percent. That was the best performing index uh, out of all of them. You had the Dow uh, was down 3 percent and the Nasdaq tech heavy, uh, tech heavy, uh, index uh, that again could have you know could have really had a really big rally on Nvidia's earnings. They did not, and they fell 3.3%. Uh, so the question going into this week is, well, number one, where where are we technically? We're going to answer that in a second. And how long you know how long can we expect to be in this little downward cycle? Again, that is to be determined. We don't know. If I knew that for a fact, I'd be a holy genius, which I'm not. I'm a holy idiot, which is a fact. The king of the idiots, undisputed. It will never nobody will ever take my title. But the point is, um, you know, the point is, like I say in every single video, that's the greatest thing about all these little squiggly lines that new traders say, well, Dan, how can we have all these squiggly lines? That's the point. You don't know, right? Not, not because it's out of ignorance or anything else. But again, you know, not, not a lot of people really believe that all these little unnecessary lines are very necessary. I happen to believe, and, you know, my, my experience of close to 24 years uh, is really showing us the why these all these lines are important to understand where all the grenades are are you know are placed so you don't step on one and that's uh, kind of a conversation for a, a separate time but let's talk about it right let's talk about kind of where we are we already know what happened uh, we already know the history of what happened so far as in 2023 now our job is to figure out what happens next let's start off with uh, the Nasdaq okay uh, the overall. The overall view on the Nasdaq is still very, very positive. Again, you, you just don't go from bull market to bear market just like that. We reclaimed this 278 on the QQQs uh, all the way back to January the 11th. And the longer we stay above this light blue line, right? Everybody see it? This light blue line, right? That's the 50-day moving average. So as of right now, as long as we stay above 285 on the Qs, everything is okay. Doesn't mean we can't get there, right? But it means it's okay. The problem is, and this is where we start paying attention. And if you've been, if you've been a, 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 a really uh, consistent viewer of this channel for you know many years, you know what happens. You, you know the formula. As soon as we get below the 50-day moving average, you can rip out your buy button. Sure, you're going to have to have 
You're going to have days that markets going to rally very aggressively, but the overall trend, eight out of 10 days are always going to be down. That's kind of, we've been proven by data uh, in 2022. So, and you can see here, once we lost the 50 day moving average, it's just solid selling all across the board. We got above the 50 day moving average, start, start uh, uh, solid buying. So as long as we stay above 285 on the queues, we're going to be all right. This whole trend will be intact. This whole active, you know, whole active uh, sequence, whatever you want to call it, uh, will be valid. But the question is, can the bulls do that, right? Or is this one of those scenarios that, you know what, reality is finally caught up to the stock market, right? Where, where reality was completely being negated. Well, now maybe they, maybe this is time. Maybe this is all the inflation readings and economic readings and all the Fed warnings and all the recession talk and all that stuff that we've been negating and saying, ah, oh, no, 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 it's not for me. It's not for me. Hear no evil, see no evil. Now maybe it's here, right? And we have to be adults about it. And this is why we always uh, talk about trade both sides of the market. Don't fall in love with one stock. One, don't fall in love with one side. Be open, right? Be open to both sides of the market and trade the trend, not your uh, opinion. So here's where things get a little bit more sticky for the bulls, right? Everybody see this whole bottom range here, okay? Uh, the January 30th low is 289.89, Every, right? Everybody see that? Let's just call it 290. I don't want to split hairs for 10 cents. You see what Friday's low is, right? 290, right? So you got 290 low of the bottom of the channel here, 290 low at the bottom of the channel here, right? That is our, you know, that is our line in the sand right for that right their big line in the sand will be the 50 day so 290 folks and this is not a you know this is not a this is not a conversation piece this is not a a, a starting point for a discussion if we start losing 290 just the same we, lo we lost 297 well again if you believe in the whole th ps60 theory and a lot of you guys religiously do right we believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand so the way the same way the Q's lost 297 traded out to 290 now, if we start losing 290, right, this is whole range that started all the way back to January 30th, then we're going to go all the way back here to the 50-day moving average, which is 285, right? And this is where, you know, when you retest the 50-day moving average, I'll give you an ex example right now in a second on the spies, you could test it once, maybe succeed. If you test it twice and it goes, maybe you're, you're looking for a hairier, uh, you know, a hairier situation in the future. So 290, guys, that's the magic number. 290, write this down. Uh, write this down, tattoo it on your forehead, whatever you got to do, just remember that number. Because if you are long and you carry inventory, we close below 290, we have at least five points down to the 50 day. And if we lose the 50 day, there's a whole can of worms that's going to open up. So that is kind of leads us to the spies, right? We talked about the spies on Wednesday's video into, uh, well, Wednesday's video, there's no video on Thursday. And we talked about how the spies uh, tested and held the 50-day moving average twice. Everybody see that, right? That's the light, light blue line. It held it twice. And what happened on Friday, we finally lost that 296 level and went right back down again. That's the whole point of stocks trading from demand to demand, right? So it, it didn't stop randomly. It stopped right here. It stopped right on the 150-day moving average. So if the longer we, if, if the longer we build below the 50-day moving average, and the, to the bull's credit, uh, they did rally and closed right on it, which is basically giving you a 50-50 shot uh, at the open on Monday. But if we start closing below this bottom channel here, we start closing below 293, folks. It's going to go to 293. It's not going to seem that bad, but it's going to go to 293, 290, and any close below 290, right? Look, how much, look, look at the air pocket you have. So again, we, we're not trying to scare anybody. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a bear. You know, I'm not a bear. I'm not a bull. I, well, I am this an opportunist. I'm doing this for nearly a quarter of a century. Next year is going to be nearly a quarter of a century. It's a lot of freaking time, man, to do this shit. So, um, I, I've seen a lot of this, right? Now we, we've been talking about this on day to day in real time. It's not, you know, it's not Monday morning quarterback. Well, the market, well, you should have been doing it. No, no, this, we, we, that's what we do. That's the whole point of dissecting data every single day and being prepared. Cause if those levels get taken down, you have to, you know, you have to be prepared. If you're a day trader, you have to be prepared to the downside. If you're an investor, you know, start taking some precaution, uh, like we, you know, like we were talking about in 2022, start hedging your book. Because if not, uh, your IRA, your whatever, your traditional uh, equities account, it's going to start bleeding. Uh, but so you definitely have to uh, be prepared, be one step ahead of it uh, in case uh, these things happen. So uh, major numbers going into the spies uh, for the week is this 293, 393 level. If it loses this 393 level, it's going to go down to 390. It loses 390, bombs away. 
Uh, for the Qs, let's just start talking about this 290 level. Write that down, 290, uh, 290. That's the line in the sand. 290 falls, I think we get a test of the 50-day moving average. Uh, everything else really doesn't concern me. They'll, they'll all get pulled. You know, the Russell is going to mirror everything else. Once speculation comes out of the overall market, it's going to start speculating. Money's going to come out of uh, smaller names as well. So it's not really a uh, big surprise. Is, is Bitcoin and Ethereum not really my... A uh, cup of tea, but are they going to get affected if everything starts getting pulled? Yeah, that's the, that's the whole point. If you look at 2022, there was a bloodbath in cryptos and Bitcoin and so forth and so on because there is no, you know, this, you know, there is no uh, disconnection between uh, crypto and the stock market. People thought it was right, but it, they were. It, it's 2022 really showed you that it didn't. When the when the market went down, the equities market went down, so went down crypto as well, and many of these things uh, didn't uh, recover. So the the market is going to be. Uh, is going to be correlated with all asset class uh, versus risk. Uh, the bulls, they desperately, desperately need to get back above that 298 level in the next couple of days because if they don't, that 290 level will be in play. And the same thing for the spies. Uh, if they can't get a, start reclaiming back the 400, then this 390, uh, this 393 and 390 uh, will be in its future. So, you know, going into... You know, going into uh, Monday's session, I mean, look, I, I have majority of my setups are to the downside. I mean, let's just be honest. We're at the bottom of the range. How can you turn around and go, oh, I like this one for a bounce? Well, if you like this one for a bounce and you don't love this one for a bounce, you go into the trade half ass, right? And again, risk reward is everything, and the risk reward is different things to different people. But the point is, when you're trading, you want to have a clear, uh, clear path to the channel. And hopefully not, you know, something that you're taking a shot with a small risk. If you're taking a small risk, that means you have a small reward because you're unsure of the play. That's you never want to do anything half-assed. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. So if you have a uh, you have a level a murky level that the market needs to work through, it's better to either stay on the sideline or become uh, a cash flow trader for that interval than kind of take shots and take unnecessary losses when there's a 50-50 shot. And that's exactly where we uh, open up on Monday, right on the 50-day moving average. Uh, on the SPY. So let me give you guys some names uh, that I am watching uh, for Monday. Look, if the market does rally, the only stock that really interests me is NVIDIA, right? If you look in the video, again, at the 60-minute channel, and you can see here a massive, massive move up on earnings. Uh, obviously, you know, only, it was up 33 points on earnings. It was only up down three and change on, on, you know, uh, the, on Friday, if this thing starts getting above this little channel here, I think on the video wakes up, look, if the market's going to rally, don't you want to, you, you want to be in the strong stock. You don't need a million strong stocks. You just need one that just had really, really good earnings. Uh, if the market continues to go lower, um, I mean, look at, look at a stock like NOW, right? Software name, you know, again, it's approaching, it, it held its 50 day moving average on, on Friday. If this thing starts losing the 50 day moving average, look what happens, right? So it's, it's going to get hit. All you have to do is look at Google, right? You see this light blue line? Google lost a 50-day moving average. Look what happened. You have four days straight selling. So look at NLW, right? This is how important this light blue line is. If NLW closes below this 50-day moving average, yeah, you have, you have 15 points down. That looks really, really good uh, as well. Uh, slower player, right? Slower player for all you guys who like slower stocks. Uh, Lyft blew up on earnings. And just keep an eye on this bottom channel here. If this thing starts taking its earnings low, uh, you'll have two, three, maybe four, five days of just fades, right? That's usually what happens when you when you take down the earnings low. You, the stock will just start to fade. Uh, and let me give you guys one more. Let me give you guys one more. Look at Meta, right? Look at Meta. Um, you know, look at Meta. It held the 20 day supply, right? It held the 20 day rise. Excuse me, hold it. Held the 20 day rise in support. If it starts losing that rising support, man, this thing has a lot of room. Uh, as well. So that's it, guys. Most important thing is be prepared for both sides. Be conscious to where the markets are. Technical levels are there to save you. They're not there to trick you. They're not there to harm you. The market is not trying to trick you, okay? It's giving you raw data. And whether you're a trader for 15 minutes, 15 months, or 15 years, we're all getting the same data in front of you. It's your job to identify it and understand and embrace it. If you run away from technical analysis, I promise you, you'll be a victim of it. Guys, God bless Stay healthy, stay happy, and with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.